Hey y'all. So today we're going to be covering three different ways to test your iOS app and why you should probably maybe be running a little bit more tests than you are. So with that being said, let's grab our favorite cup of coffee or whatever your beverage is and hop in. What are your three different ways to test your app? Well, they are manually with beta users and automatically or automatically. Um, I'm going to go through each. I'm going to give a description of each of them and then weigh some pros and cons and what you should really be doing at the end. And in the next video, we're going to talk about actually writing some unit tests and such like that. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, all that good stuff while you're down there so that you get notified whenever I make the next video about tests and writing tests in Swift and how all that's supposed to work. All right, so let's talk about manual testing. Well, that's probably the one we're all most familiar with. This is where you run, are running your app in the simulator or a real device and you click on all the buttons. So when you're inside Xcode, you, have the, you usually have the simulator going, you're building it, you're running the app as you need to, um, once you're ready, you hit the button, you know, you build it, you replace it, all that good stuff. And then the app is going to pop up. And when the app pops up, this is when we do our manual testing, really. So what exactly does manual testing look like? Well, it looks like you running the app, going through, making sure you can actually type things in like this making sure buttons work, making sure you can do certain features of the app. If you're a good developer, you probably have a checklist to go through of all the different features that you actually want to hit while you're testing. Like I'm adding shows, I'm adding buttons, I'm pushing all the buttons, making sure stuff is firing in the console if I need to, stuff like that. Now let's talk about some pros and some cons for manual testing. Pros, you know exactly what to check. You can go in, you can run that app, you know your app inside out. Um, pro, another pro is you get really familiar with it um, because you're just, you're doing the steps exactly how you think you're doing. Now, another pro is that you're running it on devices locally. Like I said, you can get that feedback really quickly also because, oh, you run into an issue, great. You can either log the bug or just go take care of it right there and then continue testing after it's taken care of. Now here's where the cons come in. And believe me, there are, this is probably the one that I have the most cons with. So what are they? Well, there's a big chance you're gonna miss a bug. If you are literally the only one testing and you don't test a certain feature the right way, you are probably going to miss something. So that you're gonna skip by something and there's gonna be a bug in your code. It is, uh, it's limited to the devices you have uh, so if you only have an iPhone 12 Pro Max, that's going to be the only thing you can test on. If you only have the simulator, then that's going to be the only thing you test on. So you don't get a wide range of, of devices. You're kind of very limited in how you're testing. Also, it's manually, so it sucks all your time to do that all the time. Um, also, one major con that I have right now is that the simulator doesn't actually give you the truth. If we go back into iHog here, just inside the simulator, we can see that I can run the app, I can click on it, I can open it, all that good stuff, and it's all working. Well, fun fact, I run it on my phone and it actually doesn't work. So that's actually a big bug that I'm going through. So it's actually just frozen and stuck and doesn't actually show anything. And that, my dear friends, is why you can't just rely on the simu simulator and why manual testing might not be the best and only use case for you. You should always, always, always test on device also. So like I'm saying, manual testing, not necessarily the best. Um, so what's the step next best thing that you can do? And the next step, the next way to test your app that I'm really going to say is beta users. Get your app onto test flight. If you get out your app on a test flight, then you are more than likely to get different ranges of users. You're gonna get real life feedback, all that kind of stuff. So test flight is for iOS and soon to be Mac OS apps uh, beta program. So you can submit your app to test flight and then you can have beta users sign up and they can test out the apps for you. 
Um, this is another way of testing your apps before they get out in the real world. You still need to make sure your apps are running and they work and they're functional before you do that. Other than that, like they can help find, they can help you find other bugs that you may have missed. Maybe they're doing a different workflow than what you're, than what you thought, that kind of stuff. And so that really is where beta users shine. You're getting your apps in front of, uh, you're getting your app in front of other people so that they, you can get their feedback. How does like test flight and the feedback process works? Well, basically that's really up to you and how you want to implement it. But Apple does have a built in way with test flight. They download the app, the app crashes. It'll say, Hey, do you want to send this feedback back to Apple? And they can say yes or no. Um, basically you just need a way to, for them to communicate with you so that they can report the issues that they find and you can go and fix them because ultimately you want to make a good app for people to use. So having beta users, having real life users actually use the app is a great way to do that. Um, I have beta users for iHog. They sometimes find issues. They sometimes don't find issues. Most of the time, my issues are actually all found in production, which is not the best, but you know, they're still found there. So what are our pros and cons for beta users? Well, pro, you get real world use cases. Other pro, user feedback can improve your app, either through bugs, through um, features, stuff like that. Um, also, you're building a rapport with those users a little bit of just like, hey, you're giving them a little bit extra um, beta test flights are usually free so you can get in. Um, if you have a paid app test flight, usually you download the app for free. Um, it's just a lot of stuff like that. Like you get, you start building like that user connection, um, and users start built trusting your app as you're iterating through and they see it getting better. Now there are some cons and a lot of the cons are the same. You're limited to whatever devices the people have, you're limited to, um, the biggest con though is the feedback might not be exactly what you need or might not be as much as you need. So if you need a lot of feedback and you're, you really need to hound your beta users to actually give you feedback on what you want. I know I have test flight on like, I know personally I'm using test flight on several different apps. I don't submit feedback like ever unless the app crashes. And that is basically because that there's nothing wrong. So the app is functioning like I think it should, um, but maybe I'm not testing the right thing. Maybe I'm not going through the right stuff. And you're stuck to those users who just don't do that. But yeah, those are, those are basically the con, pros and cons of beta users. All right, so the last way to test your app that I'm gonna talk about today is automatically testing your app or auto magically, as I like to call it, testing your app in your code. Um, so this is where, so this is where your tests actually exist inside the code base itself. Um, you have written test cases that go through and they test different functions. They test and make sure that buttons work. You can do that automatically also, which is pretty neat. Um, you have written the code yourself to make sure that these tests are functioning. I highly think this is the this is a way that everyone should be practicing now. I was not practicing any kind of testing um, for the first couple of versions of iHog. I am slowly adding them in, and I think it's totally, totally worth, worth it to, to add, add this testing, testing in. in. Let's, Let's do, do a little, little overview, overview on where, where these tests live inside Xcode. There's, There's usually a test, test and then a UI test, and I have a UI test screenshots, and we'll get to that in just a second because that's a little third party stuff that. I should tell you about. So inside your iHog tests, you can go through or inside whatever app tests you have. Basically, this is where you write all, all the tests that should run for your app. Every You can run just the test if you want to. It's Command U will run all of your tests and it's you can see that it's launching the test and it's running through. So this is what I mean by automatic tests. And you can see inside here that it says all the tests have passed, um, 37 tests passed with zero failures, which means I haven't written enough tests because there should be lots of failures right now since I can't actually do anything in the app on the device. But yeah, so you can test uh, internal function of your app. You can test uh, UI functions of your app, like make sure actually buttons get pressed. That is 
what these UI tests are for. Make sure it can open repeatedly, stuff like that. Stress test your app. All of these types of things are really good to put in your automatic tests. That way when you hit command U before you ship or after you write something, you can see that make sure that nothing broke that already existed. Or you can take it a step further and run test-driven development. So test-driven development in a nutshell works like where you write the test, test doesn't pass, pass, you write just enough code to get the test to pass, and then you keep going and you basically keep keep going in, the, in that way. That way you're always having tests written as the code is being built, as your app's being built, so that you actually have a well-tested app everywhere. You should really be going for 80% code coverage. That's usually what the internet agrees on, 80% test coverage. I mentioned it in my continuous integration, continuous development video. It'll be up in a corner. Click on it, um, go watch the video, because that's the next step in actually getting your tests automatically ran. Every time you push code, you could run the tests automatically. And that's where this automatic testing comes through. So though I've done pros and cons for each of them, you've heard my big pro, like I'm a big proponent of automatic tests. So let's talk about, let's talk about these pros and cons. So starting off with pros, number one, there's no human error. Um, you're gonna test everything that you've written tests for. So basically, as long as there's a test written for it, you're doing it, it's gonna be done. Um, it runs without you doing it. So what that means is that you don't have to sit there and manually push the button. If you know pushing the button breaks the breaks your app five times, write the test for it. If you write the test for it, guess what? It's going to push the button five times, and then if it doesn't break, great, the test passes. If it breaks, the test fails, and you know you have to go fix it. And then every time now you run your test, it'll check that. It'll check that and make sure that uh, pushing that button five times doesn't break the app. Another big pro is you can do this with, and it doesn't have to take up your computer space. So again, like I said, um, if you automate this with uh, continuous integration, like uh, BitRise, uh, what's another one that I think, uh, Circle CI, GitHub Actions, all that kind of stuff, you can actually run your Swift tests in the cloud and you don't actually have to take the time to do it. Uh, but again, you can also do it on your computer, command U and it'll run and it'll test and it'll be great. Um, now, some of the cons, it's not the best at testing UI. You're kind of limited, again, to what Xcode has given you for the simulator. Um, and it might not find edge cases because you might not have built the tests. And then also another big con is if you don't write the test, then guess what? It's not going to test for it. So you could still be missing issues. So that's really like my pros and cons for all three. That's how I think about those three tests. Now let's talk about which is actually best. Neither of them are the best. I don't think any one of them you can rely on reliably to do all of your testing on. I think you should always be doing a combo of all three of them. You need to be doing manual testing. Once you're, you can figure out when to add beta users in, it doesn't really matter, but you should be doing it. And finally, you should also be writing tests in your code. You really should be writing tests in your code, hit those spots, Find out where those where those issues can hit even before you ship, even to beta users. That should be the first thing is making sure your tests run, making sure they work, making sure you manually can use the app, and then finally push it to your beta users as your as your final final line of defense. So how I think the order should be is your automatic test cases where you hit command U and it runs the tests. Then you should have your um then it should be your manual testing. So where you run it locally on your device or locally on your simulator. And then finally, you're gonna get your act, your beta users involved. Push that to test flight. Whatever you're using for beta users, push it out, get their opinion, get their feedback. They're your last line of defense. Once it all comes back good, you can ship that app. And that's my opinion on testing. So. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, please hit me up on Twitter, put it in a comment, um, join the Discord community, link in the description below. While you're down there, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, get notified when I post new videos, when I go live, because sometimes 
I like to work on my apps live. I'm either designing, developing, writing tests, all that kind of stuff. It all goes live Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Central Standard Time right here on this YouTube channel. Um, and with that being said, I will catch you next time. Bye.